In this video, I'm gonna share tips for how to best optimize your LinkedIn profile. Hey, my name is Luke Sievers with One9 Pro, helping you reflect success in your brand and grow your business online. Please hit the subscribe button to get more LinkedIn tips like this in the future. Now, when it comes to LinkedIn profile optimization, you need to first determine what your end goal is on LinkedIn. Are you trying to get new business, get hired, or build a massive following? What do you want? With whatever that is, you need to determine who is your target audience? Who are you optimizing your profile for? So many of us are used to thinking of our LinkedIn profile as a resume, and it is in a way. However, there are so many different preconceived notions about what a resume is supposed to be that I just want you to get that out of your head completely. Instead, think of your LinkedIn profile as a website for your personal brand. So I have 10 LinkedIn profile tips to help you do this. I'm gonna go over each major part of the LinkedIn profile, but as we do, you need to keep in mind two key principles. One, whoever your target person is, we need to optimize your profile in such a way that it appeals to this person. And second, we need to keep authenticity at the forefront. LinkedIn is not what it used to be, and these days, people really value authenticity and connecting with real people. And so for number one, let's talk about your headline. Now your headline is your most important asset on LinkedIn. And that's because it shows up with every single post you make and every single comment that you leave on top of being on your LinkedIn profile. Your headline is often the first impression you make. And so it can be a powerful tool if used properly. By default, LinkedIn is gonna fill this in with your title and your current employer. But leaving this as the default would be a huge mistake. Nine times out of 10, you're actually going to want to steer away from using your title entirely. Unless you're the CEO of a well-known brand. So nobody cares. And this is a big waste of your headline. Because your target person doesn't really care about what you do. What they care about is how you're going to solve their problem. Also, don't use generalized or vague descriptions like entrepreneur, storyteller, innovator. These sort of descriptions are not very helpful. And something else you should avoid is mentioning all the things that you do personal styling, guerrilla marketing, viral marketing, marketing, interior design, personal bodyguards. Because the more items you add, the more likely you are to confuse your target person. Just stick with one main idea that they can latch onto. What we are going to do instead is use our headline to explain how we can add value to that target person. To do this, you need to pinpoint the core problem this person has that you can help solve, and then in just a few words explain how you solve it. My headline has changed a little bit over time, but the most effective one I've used is basically growing your business through branding and web design. What this is doing is capturing the attention of my target customer, a business owner, and explaining how I add value to them. If their main motivation is to grow their business and they happen to recognize that branding and web design is something that they need, then they're going to be drawn to my profile. If you're having trouble coming up with a headline like this, just fill in these blanks. I help X to X by doing X. For example, for a chiropractor, this could be, I help people with chronic health issues live pain-free through chiropractic. Or let's say you're trying to land a job in customer service. Your headline could read, I want to serve your company by turning unhappy customers into raving fans. Notice the way that this is framed, because the goal is not to appeal to the company's customer by saying, I'll provide great customer service. Instead, I'm hitting on the value that the employer really cares about by turning these unhappy customers into raving fans. Number two, after your headline, your profile photo is the second most important part of your LinkedIn profile, because it's also one of the first things people see even before landing on your profile. For this, you need to use a professional headshot that is zoomed in on your face. You'll want to make sure that the backdrop is fairly neutral and not too busy. You also want to follow the rule of dressing for the job you want. Does your target person want to hire or work with someone who is dressed professionally, who is serious, or someone who's really friendly and smiley, who is uh, dressed modern? The answers to this will vary from person to person, but it will determine how you present yourself in your photo. But at the same time, I want to stress that it's important that you still stay true to your personality. Appeal to your target audience, but do so in a way that feels natural to you. As a pro tip, you may want to do just a little bit extra work to add a ring around your profile photo. You'll see some people doing this on their LinkedIn profile, and you'll notice that it really draws the eye more than photos that don't have this. And also, many of us have been conditioned to click on these sort of profile photos, and this is probably due to Instagram kind of having the ring around the profiles when you upload an Instagram story. 
So this will involve a little bit of graphic design work, but I'll include a link in the description below for a resource where you can do this yourself on your profile photo. Next, let's talk about your background or your cover photo. This is basically the banner image at the top of your LinkedIn profile. Aesthetics do matter in influencing the way people feel about you, and adding a nice cover photo to your LinkedIn profile is a great way to do this. So this is something that does need to be well designed and incorporate your brand's colors and other aesthetic elements. You can create one for free using a free service like Canva, or you can hire a designer like me to do it for you. Aside from the aesthetics, let's talk about what you should include on your cover photo. And I would not recommend using stock photos here. I would actually recommend using a professional photo of yourself that helps to kind of uh, accentuate all these other elements we've already talked about. We talked about hitting on the value and the end result you're providing within your headline. So how can we communicate this same thing visually? If you're a public speaker, for instance, a great image to use would be one of you kind of addressing the crowd with the camera pointed to the side. That also shows the side of the uh, audience and shows their engaged faces with what you're saying. If you're a consultant like I am, you could show a photo of you working directly with your clients. If you're a portrait photographer, what I would do is uh, show a, an image of your client who's smiling, getting their photo taken, and uh, they're in focus while you're slightly out of focus. It kind of shows that end result that they're getting. These are just some ideas, but something else you can consider is if you've worked with some well-known companies, you can include the logos for these companies to show your uh, repertoire of work. You could include a list of services and specializations that you want people to know about. You could include your business tagline or your business logo. These are just some ideas, but don't get too carried away because it doesn't take much before the image starts to look a little too busy. And one last thing I wanna mention is just be mindful of the placement of all these items within your image because it will appear a little bit different on desktop versus mobile devices. Number four, now you'd think that your name would be the most obvious part of your LinkedIn profile. What's his name, what's his name? I got nothing on a name. Come on baby, what's the name? But I do just have one key point to mention about this. If you're using something like Jonathan H. Smith III, Esquire, PhD, um, you know, this might work for some situations, but nine times out of 10, this is overkill. As a rule of thumb, we wanna aim for authenticity. So include the name that you actually go by. If people know you simply as John Smith, then write that. If there are inconsistencies between your LinkedIn profile and real life, this is only going to hinder your personal brand. Now everything I've mentioned up until this point are elements that exist above the fold. Um, above the fold on a website basically refers to all the elements that you see when you first land on the page without having to scroll down. And by nature, they're the most important elements. So there's one more element above the fold that I wanna mention, and that's your primary call to action. For this, you have two main options, for people to connect or to follow. Now, if people connect with you, then you get to see their content on your newsfeed and they see yours. But if people follow you, then they'll see your content, but you won't necessarily see theirs in your newsfeed. Now, there is some debate over which one is better, but I think it just goes back to what are your goals on LinkedIn. Of course, both allow the other person to see your content, but the benefit of making that person a connection is that by you seeing their content, you're able to further engage with them and build that relationship with them over time, build that community. For me personally, I get more connection requests than I'm really able to handle on a regular basis as far as accepting or declining them. And so by just adding the follow button, people are able to see my content, but I don't have to spend as much time deciding and qualifying who I want to be my connection. Ultimately, you have to choose what makes more sense for you. It's important to know that the default call to action is going to be connect. So if you want to change it to follow, I actually have a video where I talk about how you can do this in your settings. I'll include that in the link below. The next important section is your summary or about section. As we've talked about, your headline needs to share in just a few words how you solve your target audience's problem. Here is where you have a chance to expound on that. Share how you are uniquely positioned to solve their problem and what results have you achieved for other people in the past. If you had just one chance to pitch someone, write this as if this is your one chance because it very well might be. I recommend talking in the first person to keep it personal and authentic. Try to keep it as brief as possible because the longer it becomes, the less likely someone is to actually read it. And at the end, you should provide a clear action step that you want this person to take, whether that be to connect, to book a call, or whatever. Number seven, in your featured content section, you have the opportunity to provide links to whatever you want to, really. 
but you wanna make your first two items really count. For your first one on the list, I strongly recommend making this a secondary call to action other than the follow or connect button. This call to action should be for those warm leads who are ready to work with you in some capacity. For mine, I use a book now link that takes you to my appointment calendar, but for you, you could also link to a product, uh, an online course that you're selling, or uh, to a contact form. For the second featured content, this should include some staple piece of content in a form of an article or a video that really demonstrates your knowledge and expertise on a certain subject and also builds trust with that target person. The rest of your featured content can follow suit with the same concept, but just make sure your first and second slot include your call to action and your staple piece of content because they're the only ones that show up at first. If you scroll down further on your LinkedIn profile, there's a section called activity. This basically shows all of your recent activity, like your comments on other people's posts, but it also shows the recent posts that you've made. While this section can't be directly optimized like the rest of your LinkedIn profile, it is super important because a lot of people will scroll down and click on this to see what other content you've put out there. They may even give you some engagement on it, which can boost your content as well. It's so important that you're actively posting content on LinkedIn. Again, this is an opportunity to reach your target audience by sharing your knowledge and your expertise and building trust with them. Many people visiting your profile will be impressed to see that you're actually active on this platform. Number nine, let's talk about the experience section of your LinkedIn profile. Of course, this is the typical resume aspect of your profile. And the only thing that I'm going to say about this is that you don't wanna to include too much in this section. Please don't share all the things. Don't share all the things you've done or all the things you're doing right now. Professional resume, athletic and special skills resume, and Dwight Schrute trivia. If your target person or your target audience is looking at this section, what they're going to be looking for is relevant experience, not everything you've done. So just include work and volunteer experience that actually relates to the type of work that you're trying to get. But in all honesty, my theory is that this section is becoming less and less important every single day. But I'd be curious to know what your thoughts on that. Please comment below to let me know what you think. All right, we've reached point number 10. Thanks for hanging in there with me. As you're scrolling down your LinkedIn profile, the last major section you should really pay attention to is your LinkedIn recommendations. Think of this like the testimonial section on your website or a review on your Google listing. If someone is seriously considering working with you, this can often push people over the edge to choose you over someone else. My friend Thomas Heath, who's another great LinkedIn marketer, is a big proponent of this section. If someone is on the fence about working with him as a coach, he'll just tell them, hey, go check out my LinkedIn recommendations, and this does the trick. Now I'll admit, this is a section that I still need to work on, and that's because it does take a little bit of time to build up. So start as soon as possible to think of people who would be willing to give you a testimonial, specifically that would appeal to your target audience that you're trying to reach. And when you do reach out to that person, don't be afraid to give them some direction on the talking points that you would like them to include in that testimonial. So those are my LinkedIn profile optimization tips. Are there any tips that I missed that you would have added? Please mention those in the comments below so that we can all benefit. If you want more tips for growing your LinkedIn account, you'll wanna check out this video, which includes nine LinkedIn marketing tips. And it's also found in the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.